Hey guys, this is AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is the troubleshooting of an intermittent spark control module for a two rod setup. So if you see this right here, and you see it has these two rods, and then your pilot housing right here, uh, then, then this is how you go ahead and troubleshoot it. Uh, this right here is the spark rod, and then you have an eighth inch gap between here and the ground right there. You can check it with an eighth inch screwdriver. This right here is actually the flame sensor. The flame sensor's job is only not to sense the flame, but to actually put anywhere from say 90 to 130 volts into the flame, and then it's going to rectify the voltage, and it's going to come over to the housing, and you're gonna get a DC microamp signal through the ground, through this ground, and coming back to GND proving that there is a flame. The spark rod's job is just to send voltage across and ignite the flame. All right, so this will be a two rod setup and that's a little different from another video I did with a Honeywell control uh, with a single rod. It was a uh, flame sensor and spark igniter all in one. All right, so what you have is to turn this module on, you need 24 volt hot at TH and a common on TR, which is also usually connected to the ground circuit. This GND this TR and the MVPV are connected to the common for the 24 volts and the ground. And if you were to look, you know, take this uh, plastic uh, box off, these three are all connected right on the board. There's nothing in between them. So this is the common, the PVMV, that's the common. So the second we get 24 volts on the TH and the TR, we should have 24 volts coming off the PV and the common to, to check for voltage is the PV MV. So you're sending voltage to the pilot valve, allowing gas to flow through the pilot valve on the gas valve. It's gonna allow gas to flow through. At the same time, you're gonna send high voltage off of this wire right here, which is the spark wire coming to the spark rod. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, turn this thing on and we're going to see that happen. We're going to see the 24 volts on the PV right here. We got an alligator clip to the multimeter and the PV MV, you know, as a common, as the path back. And we'll see our 24 volts here. So we're going to go ahead and turn this on. All right, so you see the spark right here, and we have 27 volts between PV and PV MV. It's actually going to end up hitting a lockout. So if it doesn't light within a specified period of time, around about a minute and a half, it's going to end up shutting off the spark and the 27 volts going to the pilot valve. All right, so there you see that the voltage stopped to the PV and the PVMV. At the same time that the voltage stopped, the sparker had stopped. All right, so it has that roughly 90 second um, lockout. This way, if the sparker were to fail, you know, the board were to fail, it's not going to continue to send gas through the pilot tube. If, say, like the pilot head is, is worn and the gas is not uh, close enough to the sparker to ignite, or maybe it's not even sparking, you know, maybe this gap has opened up and maybe it's sparking over here internally or, or something like that. So basically, it has that lockout to protect against continual gas flow out the pilot housing. So now we see that we're sparking again. I just unplugged the module and I plugged it back in. And we now have 24 volts between PV and PVMV. What we did is we switched our alligator clips to the PVMV and now to the MV instead, the main valve. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and have the flame go across there and we're gonna see if we get 24 volts reading on MV to PVMV. So right there we got 28 volts and then it shut off. So once we do get 28 volts, you know, it's anywhere from 24 to 28 and a half volts, the sparker will, will stop sending the EC voltage through. Okay, so we got 28 volts again. What that's doing is it's proving that there's a flame. The flame that I'm putting across here is going from the flame sensor, which is this rod right here. It's going to the pilot housing, all right? Okay, so 
the flame rod's job. This is the flame rod wire right here. I'm going to go ahead and turn the power off just to explain this so I can point at that stuff because the sparker is going right now. So as the flame rod sends AC voltage into the flame, the flame joins from here to the pilot housing and then what's received on the ground is DC microamps. So it actually gets read through the ground wire either from here to say the gas valve and from a ground wire to there. In this case what I have is I have an alligator clip from here to the ground wire and it comes back to the GND. Uh, so we just read that when we have a flame across from this flame rod to the pilot housing we get 28 volts from MV to PVMV opening the main gas flow. Now what we're going to do is we're going to read the flame rectification signal with the multimeter. We're going to put the multimeter in series between the ground right here, the pilot tube, and the GND. And we're going to go ahead and read the DC microamps this time. Okay, so we just plugged the module in, evident by the LED status light, and we're going to go ahead and check the flame rectification in DC microamps. So you see we were reading 1.6 DC microamps right here. We'll do it again. So one point something, okay? So that's the signal, that, that, that same DC microamp signal that we're reading with the multimeter, that's what the board is looking for before it's willing to put 24 volts on the main valve, allowing the full gas to go through. It's proving that there is a flame at the pilot and that it's going to be able to ignite the burners. Okay, so the same rules apply as any type of other ignition system. Basically, the one thing for the spark, you want to make sure you have roughly right about an eighth inch gap. And right now, we have the power off, okay? Um, the flame rod, you see this flame rod actually spins around, uh, but you want to make sure that that flame rod is em enveloped in the flame, okay? Make sure it's engulfed basically inside the flame, and you want to make sure that not only the sparker, but also the flame rod is clean. You can do that with fine coarse, unsoaped steel wool. And then you want to also make sure that that pilot housing is clean. I usually wrap this in a, in a flathead screwdriver, and then I come in here and clean it all out, okay? I clean all this, uh, make sure that that's all done, and then I just blow it out after I'm finished. You want to make sure that you don't have any steel wool uh, fragments falling into uh, the pilot orifice inside here, there's a tiny little hole uh, that allows the gas to flow through. Make sure that that's nice and clean. Um, and there are several things that you want to do um, just for troubleshooting. And, and this is more of a preventative maintenance. But if you were to have a spark and say you have a pilot that's lit and you just are not powering the main valve, uh, you want to make sure that this uh, flame rod is immersed in the flame. If you check your DC microamps right here and this control board is not allowing the MV to get power and you do have some type of uh, DC microamp signal say above one DC microamp then the board is the culprit okay um, if for instance a pilot is not getting lit you you want to check to see make sure you have a good spark gap make sure you have good gas pressure uh, make sure that this orifice in here is not clogged and you want to see if you can get that pilot lit most of the time you can adjust the pilot flame on the gas valve there's actually a pilot adjustment so if you think that this pilot is not engulfing this flame rod right here then you can adjust the pressure to be higher uh, sometimes you have this uh, pilot head is is kind of worn back and kind of bent out of shape just due to the heat over time um, so you just want to make sure that you do have a nice gap uh, here and not to spread apart. As long as you have your 24 volts coming in and your TR common coming out, you should have your 24 volts between PV and PVMV. You should also have a spark. You want to make sure and see that there's no cuts in this wire going to the flame rod because if you don't have a spark here and you're still hearing the spark, it might actually be sparking maybe internally or against the cabinet. Wherever it can find the, uh, say, path of least resistance, you know, which would be a shorter gap between uh, the high voltage wire and part of the metal frame, it's going to take that route. 
Make sure you have a good ground right here, this ground wire. It's crucial uh, to make sure that you have this wire. A lot of times it's attached to the gas valve uh, with a spade connector. Uh, you want to make sure that you have a good path back to the GND. But once again, you can check that with your multimeter and you can check it even back here by pulling this spade connector off and taking your DC microamp reading from the board to this uh, ground wire. Okay, so that tells you that you would have you have a good ground. Okay, and that just is taking another thing out of play with this. Okay, so what we did here is we put the alligator clip back from the GND right there back onto the pilot tube, so it has a good ground. Now we're going to go ahead and check the sense. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and check between the sense and the ground. You see we have 125 volts, all right? That's what will be going on the flame rod. So in order to test something like this out, you just need to know um, what it's supposed to do. And if it's not doing it, uh, then, then you know that your module is the problem. So you want to start with 24 volts in, and then you should have 24 volts from PV to uh, PVMV. At the same time, you're going to have a spark occurring right here. So if you're missing one of those two items, you want to see why you're missing it. You want to make sure you have a good spark gap that all of these three items are clean. When the power is off, you want to clean them. You want to make sure that after that, that the gas is flowing. You have the correct amount of gas in the pilot tube. Make sure that the orifice in here isn't clogged. Uh, make sure that the pilot is enveloping the flame rod that's sending the AC voltage into the flame. Make sure you have a good ground right here. Make sure that this uh, ground wire, wherever it's connecting at from the GND, is making a good ground. Say a lot of times it's on the gas valve. You can check for flame rectification from GND. Um, this actual terminal, if you were to pull this off, you can put your multimeter in series between the terminal and this wire right here. Then you can check for DC microamps, proving that there's a flame with your pilot. If, if you are proving uh, a flame with at least one DC microamps and this control is not allowing 24 volts from MV to PV MV, then the control is bad. But once again, you want to make sure that you have that good ground. You know, uh, you want to make sure that that flame sensor is definitely enveloped in the flame. And like I just showed you, you can check from your sense terminal to a ground to check to make sure that you are sending AC voltage into that flame. It actually takes the 24 volts in here and it increases it to 125 on this particular module. And that's what it's sending into the flame. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.